Hi, welcome back. In the previous video, we went over the production indicators report within the cost of production calculator tool from Western Beef's website. We showed how the production indicators for ABC Ranch can be compared against suggested targets and how there's uh, a ratings column put into this production indicators report to indicate whether ABC Ranch or your ranch when you use the tool for your own operation is below meeting or exceeding the suggested target and um, we also then discuss the calving distribution chart available within the cost of production tool where you can put in your uh, number of calves born through every 21 days to generate a calving distribution chart. In this video we're going to go over the cost of production summary reports for the various enterprises that are on ABC Ranch. And just one little housekeeping thing first. Uh, if you are familiar with using Excel, which is how this tool is, is developed, was in the Microsoft Excel uh, software program, uh, I have it currently set up to not have any formulas or headings shown and that's just under the view tab so you can see there's no formula and no rows or column headings if you want that information showing you can go under view and just simply click to show that information how it could be useful is just to see how the cells are calculated and that might be of some use to some people so I'm just going to remove that information for now have a little bit cleaner picture and so for each of the enterprises on ABC Ranch, remember they had, we can scroll right back to the front here, under About My Ranch, they had cow-calf, replacement heifers, backgrounders, hay forage, and grazing and pasture. So we'll look at the cow-calf enterprise, and they're all set up very similar and to look a lot like what was available through uh, Western Beef's benchmarks, which are available on its website. So if you go to this reporting and click on any of these PDF icons, you'll end up having some descriptor information on the cost of production study for that calf crop year, and then you'll see a table that looks pretty much identical to this. So for ABC Ranch, they wintered 207 cows and 189 calves were weaned with uh, total pounds of calf weaned, just close to 99,000 200 pounds and average weaning weight worked out to 525 pounds. So calf crop is 95%. And so how that's just calculated is this number of calves weaned divided by the number of cows wintered. Then there's some information on your income. There's weaned calf sales. Uh, so those are actual cash sales. Those are animals, calves sold off the operation. Cows retained a background, 60 head, and then there's their suggested market value, and the replacements, 35, and the suggested market value. You'll see here that there's no uh, cull, bull, or cow revenues reported. Instead, that information is used to calculate what's called the breeding stock depreciation. So the uh, sales, the purchases of new breeding stock is offset by the sales of cull breeding stock plus an inventory adjustment for any changes in the value of the breeding stock, say if um, breeding stock appreciated or depreciated in market value throughout the year. Then we move into the section called direct costs. You'll see winter feed reported, the grazing information. So all this is captured from what was entered in the input forms by you uh, for ABC Ranch. Salt and mineral that's captured from the expenses tab. You, We all had $5,400 in total expenses for salt and mineral. We allocated 85% of the cow-calf enterprise, so 85% of 5,400 is 4590 And that's the number then that shows up in this report. So that's how all this is calculated based on the allocations that were entered and the, the winter feed de details, it's all then pulled together into this nice summary report. Same goes for all the yardage type costs. So from your total fuel, the percentage that was allocated to the cow cast ended up being 4,000 and so on and so forth through all the expense categories. 
until we come on all the way down here to total costs. 172,534 divided by the number of cows wintered works out to 833.50 a cow. And if you divide it by the total pounds of calf weaned, you need a break even price of $1.74 a pound. And you can see that right here in red font. The unit cost of production for my cow calf enterprise is $1.74 per pound of weaned calf. And based on what was uh, generated for revenues, this ABC ranch ended up losing about $97 a cow or 20 cents a pound on each calf, so 100 bucks a calf or so. Okay, so that's how you would read this report. And we'll move into the replacement heifer one. So 35 replacements were retained. None were purchased, none were lost, but there was 30 then transferred back to the cow herd and five open sold. And so the, all that information is being pulled from that heifer, replacement heifer input form, right? Five open sold, all that information then gets just summarized nice and tight in this replacement heifer cost of production summary report. The five head that were sold brought in $5,400 and the 30 that were transferred to the main herd brought in 43,500. The starting value, so that's the value of the heifers when they were weaned calves, 70, 750 a head for a total of 26,250. And you can see the winter feed information, pasture, mineral, vet medicine, and all the yardage costs based on the allocation percentages entered under the expense tab, right? Whatever percentages are put here, it works against this total expense entered to come up with the numbers that we see in this report. So total costs for the replacement heifer enterprise were 53,738, which works out to 1535 ahead. And margin therefore a loss $4,838, about $138.22 ahead. So Part of the way to rectify this, it says the cost to develop my replacement heifers is 1535 per head. My cow should be paying at least this price for my homegrown replacements. So let's go all the way back to this information under replacement, the replacement input form. When the heifers are transferred to the main herd, we were only charging the cows 1450 I'd have to bump this up to 1535 and you'll probably will get a lot closer to break even and there's still a bit of a loss there simply because five of them didn't qualify as uh, as bred females they went for slaughter and so that is a reduced revenue there so you'd even have to charge probably possibly in the range of sixteen fifty a heifer in order to break even on this on this enterprise, okay? So that explains the replacement heifer cost of production summary. There was no ranch raised bull. So as you can see, remember I said in the previous video that if you don't enter all the production and financial information, these summary reports will not populate. They'll just look like errors and zeros and that's because none of the information production or financial has been entered for this ranch raised yearling bulls because there are none on ABC ranch. For the backgrounders 60 head backgrounded total pounds gained 11,250 average daily gain of 1.59 pounds per day and the number of feeding days total was 7,080. So have information here on the actual sales of those 59 head. We had one death loss. So that's why there's 59 instead of 60. The starting value, that's based on the weaned value. There was no backgrounders purchased. Otherwise, you'd have that information here as well as you'd see the number of head up here. Now the backgrounding, the feed data that was entered gets summarized into this number, salt and mineral, yardage costs based on the percentages under the expenses tab the allocations to each of those expense categories. And we scroll down, the total cost for the backgrounding enterprise was 71448 which works out to 1190 ahead. And the margin there is a loss of 13000 
or about 217 ahead. And the unit cost of production is a dollar eighty six per pound of gain. So that number actually takes out the starting value of the calves and just bases on the the costs uh, for the feed, yardage, and other costs. Okay. Now nothing under the grassers because there wasn't a grasser enterprise, and nothing under the finishers. You can see this report is empty and full of zeros and. This means that's an error. That means that there isn't proper information there for the calculation to happen. Under the pasture enterprise, we had acreage information entered, 1,900 acres of deeded pasture, 280 that's rented for a total pasture acres of 2,180. And the total grazing days, based on all the grazing information entered for the replacements and for the cow-calf enter enterprise, was 36,579 grazing days. The value of that grazing for the to the cows was thirty thousand five thirty three, and for the heifers, we valued it at four thousand one seventeen. Now I'll just scroll back so you can see how that's where that's coming from. So remember, here's the the valuation, and I can click on the formula bar so you can see we're charging them about seventy five cents a day for the value of those heifers for grazing and then this is the two bulls and we charging a dollar ten for the bulls to graze. So I'll just return back to the pasture report. So the total revenue for grazing is thirty four thousand six fifty and this is non cash revenue, right? We are essentially charging our livestock to graze that land and it's not they're not actually paying real cash, but it's the, the value generated from being able to graze that land. Here's all the expenses pertaining to the pasture enterprise. And the total expenses are forty thousand six ninety two. The total revenue is thirty four six fifty, so there's a loss of six thousand dollars. So the animals would have to pay more to, in order to make this enterprise break even. They the cost for grazing on my ranch is $1.11 per head per day. So you'd have to bump up uh, what the animals are pay are paying. So the heifers would have to pay $1.11 instead of $0.75 cents in order for this enterprise to break even. So that's an, a, a useful exercise is going through the cost of production analysis. So you can see if you're making, if you're charging the right market value for your replacement heifers, when your cows are buying them off the replacement heifer or enterprise, are you putting the proper value to your grazing based on this uh, exercise in this report? And similarly on the forage side, are you charging enough for your hay? Um, I know it's $58 a ton here is your total expenses to make hay. Are your cows paying at least that? And in this example, they were being charged, if you recall, $60 a ton. So that's why this enterprise is actually making money. So total forage acres, 640 acres. And the total bales produced, 1,050. That work it out to tons based on the bale weight provided and the value of the hay is $65 a ton. So <clears throat> I know that when we went through the, the exercise, we charged the cows $60 a ton for the hay that they consumed. You could um, change this to 60 and, and see how things change. Oh, just one second, unprotect the sheet here. If we change it to 60 and scroll down, they're still making a, a, a profit here, okay? Total value of production, 43000 Put in your expenses. Okay. And total expenses, 38806 That's $61 an acre, $58 a ton, and $37 a bale. So the unit cost of production for my forage is fifty-eight twenty-one per ton. My cow should be paying at least this price for my homegrown forage. There. And 
uh, grain enterprise. If you have a uh, grain enterprise and you're entering that information, this summary report would be populated. And then we're going to move into winners and losers report, which basically takes the previous reports we discussed and summarizes it all into one with just a few key fields. You don't see all the detail, but you see most of the key indicators all summarized. So um, on ABC Ranch, there is the rep the cow-calf enterprise, the replacement heifers, backgrounders, forage, pasture. You'll see blank lines here. So if you had uh, ranch-raised bulls, it would show up in this line. If you had grassers, it would show up in this line. Uh, finishers, that's why there's blank lines showing up. And uh, you'll see the cash revenue generated by each of those enterprises. So that actually just comes from actual cash sales off the operation. You'll see for the forage and pasture enterprise, there's none because they don't sell, they don't do any custom grazing and they didn't sell any hay off the operation. Had you though, those, that, those numbers would show up here. The replacement heifers, the only cash revenue generated was from the sale of the five opens. All the other revenue, that will show up here is non-cash, so it's from transfers within inter between enterprises. Remember, we talked about the, the grazing, the grass being consumed by the livestock enterprises is how this revenue is generated here for the forage or for the pasture enterprise. And this forty-three thousand comes from the hay made within the hay enterprise, the forage enterprise that's fed to the cattle over the winter time period. Actual cash expenses and total expenses. So these will be cash plus non-cash and then you end up with your cash income your contribution margin and then your return to equity so this is your bottom line for each of the enterprises and um, it's the forage enterprise that's making profit and then your this unit cost of production we've talked about this in earlier videos that's your break even so dollar 77 on your cows uh, 1535 on your replacement heifers, $1.86 per pound of gain on the backgrounders, $58 per ton on the forage, and $1.11 per head per day. So um, the, by no proper design, it, it just the numbers that were, were picked to enter for ABC Ranch, you'll see a loss position here. And um, that wasn't on purpose it's just numbers that were, were picked to show as an example so that's why it's important you might be surprised that you think you have good numbers and so it's really important to go through the exercise and determine for yourself where are you at and uh, then you can just you can from that position start to make changes for your operation in order to get into profit positions with it within each of your enterprises and that might mean dropping enterprises uh, perhaps you won't uh, make hay anymore. You'll just buy it because you can buy it for cheaper than you can make it. Uh, those are some of the, the outcomes that can come from doing your own cost of production analysis. And then there's one last report that's the whole farm report, which another has a little bit of the more detail. It doesn't split it out into enterprises. It's the whole operation altogether showing your sources of revenues. And your sources, you'll see down here, that's non-cash revenues in her transfer. So the transfer of calves to backgrounder enterprise or from the replacement heifer, bread heifers coming to the cow-calf enterprise. So all the cash and non-cash revenues, as well as the non-cash and cash expenses, all summarized here with detail. And you get down to your bottom lines showing uh, total capital costs, cash costs, total production costs, your gross margin, net income, unpaid labor of $40,000, and so then your bottom line, just uh, about $7,000 short after you pay yourself. Um, so, and then the bottom here shows investment, buildings, machinery, breeding stock, total of $584,000 of investments and the various categories of where that, that money is is being spent. So that is a quick overview of the various reports. I hope that through all these videos, it's inspired you to want to download the Excel tool and start populating with, with your own data so you can see where you're at for your operation. Remember, it's best for you to 
compare yourself to your own place year over year, that's where the best value is, not from just comparing yourself to benchmark numbers that are posted by um, by various studies on cost production that are done. You get the most bang for your buck by looking at your own operation year after year. Thank you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at www.wbdc.sk.ca or klarson.wbdc at pami.ca. Thank you.